The other day I came across an article about financial wellness and I thought oh, it's going to be one of those articles full of unattainable goals and things that you can't implement in normal life. But as I read it, I realised that most of what was in it was things that I was already doing and have been doing, some of them for quite a while, um, some of them since I've lived here, which is about six, six and a half years ago now. And so I thought I would give you my version of financial wellness, which isn't that far off really. And it's a really simple way to just get on top of your finances and take control of your financial life. There's nothing mind-blowing in here. A lot of it is the obvious. A lot of it will require you to have some patience with yourself. Um, you will need to be disciplined. All the things that nobody wants to do anymore, which is why so many people are in desperate financial situations right now. So the first thing I want to say is that sticking your head in the sand, ignoring financial problems does not make them go away. It makes them worse. So the summary of all of this is to understand your situation, to know what's going on, and it'll enable you to change that. So I've made a list uh, because I didn't want to miss anything and I probably will anyway. The thing is when you're used to doing something and it's so ingrained in your system that you just do it by rote, it's very hard to explain it to other people because you just do things as second nature. So as I said, sticking your head in the sand and pretending nothing's happening, never looking at bank statements, um, never opening mail, that sort of thing, that is not going to make the situation better, it's going to make it far worse. And in the back of your mind it's always niggling at you, so the anxiety and the stress of that is always there. So, be aware. Be aware of the balances of your accounts. Are you going into overdrafts? Be aware of all your outgoings. Uh, very often people buy things without thinking and if you have a bit of a problem between your income and your outgoings be honest with yourself make a really full detailed list of everything you spend your money on and take a step back and look at it and decide what you actually don't need to buy because a lot of the time we'll look at our outgoings retrospectively and a lot of the things that we buy we just don't need. We are wasting money and we are bombarded from every direction by retailers and advertisers um, everywhere you go telling you to spend your money, telling you you've got to buy this new thing, telling you you've got to do this and you don't. Look at your income. Uh, if your income is or should be sufficient you've got to look at your outgoings. If your income isn't sufficient look at ways to boost it. Um, I have lots of videos about how I earn extra little bits of money from doing things like taking surveys and market research. They can make a difference if you're just falling into overdraft every month, if you're just unable to buy enough food for the last week of the month, that sort of thing. Are you spending beyond your means? I've talked before about looking at your outgoings. If you are spending more than you earn, something has to change. Um, and of course the other thing is learning to live without. We think that everything is a, um, a human right now. The latest phone, the latest laptop, um, TV subscription packages, fast food every Friday night, trip to the pub every weekend. It isn't. These are actually luxury things. These are not things that you have to have to have an okay life. You don't have to have Netflix. You don't have to have KFC every weekend. It, it just isn't. That's what the retailers have told you. Don't believe the lies. So I would also say that you need to be organised. Um, I use spreadsheets as my preferred medium for recording all my income and my outgoings. And I know at a glance what's in every single bank account I have. I do projections for the year so I know that 
so long as I stick to my own budget, that I won't go into any overdrafts, I won't run out of money, I won't run into trouble. There are all different ways you can do it. If you're not uh, tech savvy, use notebooks, you know, um, buy a big notebook, make tables and write it all down. Um, a lot of the mobile banking apps now have budgeting tools on them. There's no reason why you can't get this right. And when it comes to spreadsheets, it requires discipline. So every time I make a purchase, it goes into the spreadsheet. So I always know at a glance exactly where I am financially. That reduces a lot of anxiety because I'm never scared to look at my statements or my bank balances because I already know what's there. And because I know what's there, I know what I can and I can't do each month to keep it in the safe zone, so to speak. Emergency funds will remove a lot of the anxiety and the stress from your life. We know from the last four years that most people did not have enough emergency savings to protect them. And I know that the situation meant that, you know, the problems with money were way beyond what most of us could have possibly imagined. You didn't expect to lose your job, to lose your home, for your rent to go through the roof, um, for you to end up living in a caravan or a tent or a van, because that's what's happened to a lot of people. Having an emergency fund used to be have one to three months of all your essential payments put aside, so your rent, your utilities, uh, what you need to keep your car on the road or be able to get around by public transport, paying for food, um, everything that was a necessity, not, oh, I've got to make sure I have enough for the latest iPhone next year or, oh, I wanted that holiday next year. You're talking about keeping a roof over your head, your car on the road, your bills paid so that you don't go into debt, no credit card debt. That emergency fund has changed. So one to three months used to be the thing. Then they were saying six months and sometimes people refer to six months to a year. Because as we know in the pandemic, there were people that lost their jobs and a year later they still had no jobs. They still had no home. So you really have to be realistic about that. Imagine the worst case possible scenario which for us here in the UK would be the pandemic. And imagine what you would need if you lost your job for six months and couldn't get another one. Getting jobs now is quite hard. You might need a year. Think about that as your basic emergency fund, not any of your other savings, just the basic emergency fund that you then put away somewhere where it can earn some interest, but is also still accessible. You know, you don't have to give like, you don't have to wait a year to get it out because what if something happens in the meantime? And know that that is there. So know that no matter what happens, for six months to a year, if something happens, you will still be able to pay your mortgage or your rent. You will still be able to put food on the table. The car that you need to get to finding a new job, you can still put petrol in it and pay the insurance on it. That sort of thing. In terms of other savings, if you have long-term plans, let's say you want to book that holiday next year or you know you're going to have to replace your car in three years or that, um, I don't know, maybe you, you know you're, you're going to need a new laptop or a new washing machine or a new oven. Think of those as other saving goals and although savings rates aren't great at the moment, there are still places you can save. Regular saving accounts are a good idea for things like this which are not... Um, immediate emergencies but you want to save up in, for in the future. Lots of the banks now have regular savers where you can put in anything between 50 and 400 a month. You'll earn some interest and you only have to put in that small amount each month. And you can't get at the money. They're, they're always like locked accounts. So if you put that money in, you know you're not going to touch it. And, and that, after the end of a year, would pay for that holiday or would pay for that new washing machine or if you had several of them, would pay for you to put a certain amount of a chunk of cash down on, on a, a new or a second-hand car. All these things make a massive difference. And it's a case of sitting down, being honest with yourself. If you are already, already in financial straits and you're anxious about the debt you have, you need to prioritise that before savings. 
So start putting away a small amount for an emergency fund and on top of that, pay off those debts. Look at things like 0% balance transfers. Money Saving Expert often has these. A lot of the credit score companies will, um, will have these offers and you could transfer debt that you're paying for on one credit card to something else that maybe offers you 0% for I've, this last week I've seen 29 months at 0% and that will give you the breathing space not to forget about it but to pay it off so you could look at you could transfer all the debt that you're paying for into a 0% and then what I would say is you don't then spend on it on that card that's that's now frozen you look at that amount and you start making a savings fund that will pay that off in 29 months and you put that somewhere where you can't get it so that in 29 months time you can flat off pay that off and it's gone if you if you're bad with credit cards don't have credit cards live on what you have because credit cards come with high interest rates and they will eat away at any spare money you have and if you're looking at it and thinking, well, I just don't earn enough or, you know, my outgoings are too high, you need to sit down and look at your outgoings. You need to be honest. Yes, it's probably going to make your life less, less interesting if you can't go on shopping halls to Primark every Saturday, if you can't go down to the pub every Saturday night, um, if you can't go out and do a girls' night out once a month. That's tough. You got yourself into this financial situation and you have to get yourself out because when debts get called in, banks don't care, credit companies don't care, they will take their money and you will be left without. You need to take control. It's so important for your anxiety levels, for your mental health and just for your general state of living. I never worry about money. I don't have a massive income. I'm on track to earn about 16,000 this year, but I know that my outgoings are about 13,500, which means that I am earning more than I spend, which means I am able to put some of that money away for, I already have a six month emergency fund, I'm trying to build on that because you never know when six months won't be enough, but I'm also squirreling away little bits of money into interest earning savings accounts and when those mature in a year, I will get all that money back plus the interest and I will have even more money. And if things go wrong between now and next year, and I know that my income is going to change reasonably drastically for my income next year, I know that I am protected from that. So I don't worry about money anymore. Uh, when was the last time I worried about money? 2019, I worried about 2018 I worried about money, I had just moved into this flat, it was the first time I'd been able to rent somewhere on my own and within months I had lost my job in town which was where I had my studio and then a couple of months after that I lost the studio which was probably good because I couldn't really afford to pay for the studio anymore so now I work from home and that means that my business effectively doesn't cost me anything to run it's in my spare bedroom, it's under the same roof as my home which I'm paying for already so it doesn't cost me anything more in rent or in energy and it's simply a case of making and selling stuff but I also have other income streams from doing surveys, from banking interest I have some part time cleaning work and it all goes into that pot and because I knew what I needed to do to get me out of that hole in 2018 that's why I am where I am now and I also survived the whole pandemic without going into any form of debt and that's purely because I've become very good at taking a step back and deciding what I do need and I don't need and these things take time you can't instantly go from a Saturday morning uh, hall shopper or an online shopping addict to I'm not going to buy anything for six months Try and no spend challenge the one year no spend challenges are a really good way to get yourself into that state of mind and those things are to your benefit retailers aren't there to make your life nice they're there to take your money from you so that they make a profit they're not there to help you they're there just to fleece you of all your spare money why would you want to give companies that um, when you don't need to so be honest with yourself lay out all your income all your outgoings every single penny and then 
take a back step and just think about what you're spending your money on and whether you really needed to do it and whether the thing, the thing that you spent the money on really was worth the satisfaction. Was Saturday night out worth wasting 60 quid on and having a hangover for two days? Just be, take a step back and really think sensibly about it. Strip away all the layers of pressure from other people, look at your life and look at what you can change. It doesn't mean your life will be boring. It might mean that you need to find other things to fill those gaps, but it doesn't necessarily mean spending money. It depends on where you live. It depends on who's around you. It depends on what you like to do. Um, if Saturday night getting paralytic is a thing for you, you probably need to have a look at whether you have a problem with alcohol. Because if you have to go and do that every Saturday night and get so drunk you can't stand up, I think there's probably something else going on there. I see them here. I see them walking up and down um, outside on a Friday and Saturday night, barely able to stand. And my drinking days are well and truly over. I can remember how ill I used to feel and how every time I would regret it and then I'd go and do it again. I'm so pleased I'm out of that because that was not fun and I dread to think the money that I have wasted on things that I didn't need to do over the years, the ridiculous shopping hauls I used to do and the clothes I used to buy and never wear, the number of charity shop runs I used to do, unbelievable. Anyway, so <laughs> I know this is going to be hard for a lot of people and people will say, well, it's my right to be able to just, you know, enjoy my life. You have to decide what what you mean by enjoyment. Anyway, so that's um, that's my my tips and advice for the day. If you are in a situation where money stresses you out, take a hard look at it. It can make a really big difference. Just the knowledge of where you are and the things that you can change puts the power gives the power back to you. It puts the ball back in your court and gives you. The, the right to make decisions about your life that aren't governed by retailers and fast food shops and all the bad stuff that we actually don't really need in our life. It's worth stripping back your life and having a look. So any questions and comments below, um, it can completely change your life if you need to change your life. Or it can just be the tweaks that you need to improve your life. But give it a go. You will require discipline, and I know that, you know, we want everything now. We want to lose two stone in th three weeks. We want to be able to earn an absolute fortune overnight. It does not work like that. These things take time. You need to learn patience and learn that good things are worth waiting for. So that's my tips for today. Hope you're well, and um, speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.